The position of an object at time t is given by the parametric equations. We want to find the horizontal velocity, the vertical velocity, and the speed at the moment t equals two, where time t is in seconds, and x and y are in meters. So to find the horizontal velocity, we'll first find x prime of t, or dx dt, and then evaluate this derivative function at t equals two to find the horizontal velocity. So x prime of t is equal to the derivative of four t squared plus three t with respect to t, which would give us eight t plus three, and therefore the horizontal velocity at t equals two seconds would be equal to x prime of two, which would be eight times two plus three, which is 16 plus three or 19, and the units would be meters per second. So at two seconds, the object is traveling horizontally with a velocity of 19 meters per second. And now to find the vertical velocity, we'll first find y prime of t or dy dt, and then evaluate the derivative function at t equals two to find the vertical velocity. So y prime of t is equal to the derivative of three t squared plus one with respect to t, which would be six t, and therefore the horizontal velocity at two seconds would be y prime of two, which would be equal to six times two or 12, and this would be 12 meters per second. So we found the horizontal velocity to be 19 meters per second, and we also found the vertical velocity to be 12 meters per second. Before we find the speed though, let's take a look at what's happening graphically. The parametric equations are graphed here in blue. As t increases, the curve is traced in this direction, which is called the orientation of the curve. We can find the position of the object at two seconds by evaluating our equations at t equals two, which I've already done here on the right. X of two equals 22 and Y of two equals 13. Therefore, at two seconds, the object is at the point 22 comma 13, which is graphed here in red. This horizontal vector here represents the horizontal velocity at t equals two seconds. And since the velocity was 19 meters per second, the magnitude or length would be 19. This vertical vector represents the vertical velocity at two seconds, and because the vertical velocity was 12 meters per second, the length or magnitude would be 12. Now the speed at this point would be equal to the magnitude of the velocity vector, where these two vectors are the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity vector. So if we added these two vectors together, let's say we copy this horizontal vector here at the end of the vertical vector, it might look something like this. And the sum of these two vectors, or the resultant vector, would be the velocity vector at t equals two seconds, which would be this vector here. So the magnitude of this velocity vector would be the speed at t equals two seconds. This would also be 19, and notice how we can see these three vectors form a right triangle, where this is the right angle and therefore we can find the length or magnitude of this vector using the Pythagorean theorem, which we can see in our speed formula on the previous slide. To find the speed at t equals two seconds, we take the square root of x prime of two squared plus y prime of two squared, which again can be found using the Pythagorean theorem. So the speed at t equals two seconds is equal to the square root of x prime of two squared plus y prime of two squared, which would be equal to the square root of, well, x prime of two is 19, so 19 squared plus y prime of two is 12, so plus 12 squared, which equals the square root of 505, which would be approximately 22.47 meters per second, which is the speed of the object at two seconds. So going back to our graph one more time, the magnitude or length of this vector here would be approximately 
0.47, which represents the speed of the object at t equals two seconds. I hope you found this helpful.